So we have a ton to cover when it comes to Tesla stock. However, before I go ahead and dive into the price action, I wanna go ahead and highlight some economic news that is pertinent to what could possibly happen to Tesla going forward in this week. Now, I went ahead and shared with the Push and Profit Private Group some major economic reports and dates that we have to pay attention to. Now, I highlighted that in the beginning of the week, we have a ton of Fed members speaking. However, I highlighted that although we have a ton of Fed members speaking this week, most of them speaking are non voting Voting members. Now I want to go ahead and share this chart with you guys so that you guys can see over here and really just explain that non-voting members, while they still attend FOMC meetings, they contribute to discussions and provide input on monetary policy matters, and they share you know their perspectives and analysis on economic conditions, they cannot cast a vote during policy decisions. So their insights and viewpoints are considered by the voting members when shaping monetary policies. So yeah, it's important to hear what they say, but we have to understand that, you know, although what they can say ha may have like an influence on the market, it's minuscule in comparison to voting members. So we have Raphael Bostic speaking, Mary Daly speaking, James Bullard speaking, and it's gonna be important to hear the tone that is coming from these speakers. However, it's not gonna be something that's significantly going to move the markets. Now, though I shared these events with the Push and Profit Private Group, one thing that I did mention to the private group is that, yeah, all these events are important to watch, but there's one event that that's not on this list that is the potentially biggest driver of what could happen this week, and that is debt ceiling news. And with that being said, we're starting off the week pretty badly as we just had Biden deliver grim debt ceiling warnings while sharply criticizing Republicans. Now, I highlighted some remarks that Biden made recently, and he said that congressional Republicans could use a national default to damage him politically and acknowledge that time had run out to use potential unilateral actions to raise the federal borrowing limit, a sharp, swift tone in days before the deadline to reach an agreement. He also went on and said, I can't guarantee that they will not force a default by doing something outrageous. Now, for a couple of weeks to the Push Your Profit Private Group and also here on YouTube, I said that it's very unlikely that a default is going to happen. I don't think politicians are that dumb to let like in, you know, conflicts between the two parties really end up having a calamitous event in the economy by defaulting. However, the possibility of it actually happening is still on the table, right? It's very unlikely but we have to acknowledge that it is a possibility. In addition, Biden also said, I think there are some MAGA Republicans in the House who know the damage it would do to the economy, and because I am president and presidents are responsible for everything, Biden would take the blame, and that's one way to make sure Biden's not reelected, he said. Now, at this point, it's kind of getting a little bit nail-biting, right? A little bit scary that as we get closer to the possibility of a default, we have political parties weaponizing the you know impacts of a default on each party. So that's honestly something that is a little bit concerning and may really happen to hurt the markets going forward in this week. Again, there may be an update as we are, hopefully <laughs> there's an update of positive news as we go into the market, but right now, now, you know, things are not looking too positive. Additionally, Biden in his news conference addressed the possibility of using the 14th Amendment to continue U.S. government borrowing in the absence of a deal, suggesting he has the power, but not the time to utilize a unilateral action. Now, at this point, having the conversation of going ahead and using the 14th Amendment to bypass having to have a deal to raise the debt ceiling is pretty much useless because even if Biden does use the 14th Amendment, it's most likely going to be challenged right and obviously we don't have time for things to get challenged right a deal has to be made now looking at Tesla from a technical standpoint one of the things I've highlighted a multitude of times on YouTube and also in the private group is that hey you know while Tesla has been very bullish in the last few trading sessions we are approaching this area where it's highlighted in this green circle over or yellow circle I'm sorry I'm terrible with my colors but this yellow circle over here where we have a large amount of volume by price which is different from the traditional volume by time. See, when we have a lot of volume by price, I say this over and over again, but I have to uh, really explain this, is that when we have a lot of volume by price, that means that there is a battle between the bid and the ask, and we tend to see you know, supports and resistances created at these levels, and we see consolidation. And so we're approaching this level over here, right? We may you know, still continue to be bullish, but as we get closer, 
we have to really, you know, kind of sit back a little bit because it's very possible that we may not break above this area of resistance over here, uh, highlighted with this kind of red dotted line, which is the point of control on the volume profile. Now, if you guys want to understand, you know, volume profile a little bit further, I do have a video that I'll let you guys, you know, I'll point you guys to watch at the end of this video that really explains this a lot better. Now, in addition to looking at Tesla from a technical aspect and also talking about the Fed speakers that are coming in the beginning of the week and also of course the big cloud of the debt ceiling there's some more major economic news coming out this week that is really important and that is the PCE index now the PCE report is an inflationary gauge just like the CPI report right the consumer price index however the PCE report is what the Federal Reserve FOMC members actually pay attention to right this is what they look more closely into in opposed to looking at the CPI and so this is another report that they're gonna watch to see how inflation is doing and if we have you know a negative report where inflation is still sticky and it's still hot well that means that Jerome Powell is more likely to lean towards a hawkish stance and hike rates even further and that wouldn't be good for anybody now I don't have to explain why a bad report leading to Jerome Powell hiking rates would be bad for the overall market you guys already know that you guys are smart enough however you know we know that recently Jerome Powell and his speech that he had just recently last week he said that the possibility is still on the table so while everyone is saying that you know hikes are off the table we're going into pause mode and then we're going to pivot he himself has said, well, no, that's not necessarily true. And they're still looking at the data. So, you know, a lot of scary news this week. I'm not trying to be a doom and gloom type of person and telling you guys, oh, you know, we have this issue with the debt ceiling. We have uh, Fed speakers coming out. We have, you know, another inflationary report that if it's bad, things could be bad. You know, the technicals of Tesla look, you know, kind of bad. Look, guys, I'm not trying to be, you know, like I said, a doom and gloom type of person. I'm just highlighting some things that could significantly move the markets. Now, again, going back into the technicals of Tesla, if we want some optimistic news, yeah, although I did say that we're getting closer to this area of resistance with the point of control on the volume profile, we're still not there yet. So we could technically still have a few more bullish uh, trading sessions before we even have to worry. However, the main concern is all the economic events that are coming forward into this week. Now, as someone who's trading Tesla in the short term, but also has exposure to Tesla in my long term, I want to go ahead and explain my game plan. And it's very simple. As a trader, right, in the short term time frame, I'm pretty much backing away from Tesla in these next few trading sessions because there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. So, of course, if there's a clear indication that things are going down, then yeah, I'll short Tesla, I'll, I'll you know, maybe buy puts or short it, whatever, right? But in my long-term portfolio, where I have exposure to Tesla and, and a few other you know, stocks and the S&P 500, whatever, in my long-term portfolio, I'm not too concerned because like, I'm basically gonna do something very simple. Every time we have major declines in Tesla, major dips, I'm simply going to be buying the dips and dollar cost averaging. It's a proven method. It's something that, you know, you don't have to worry about timing in the market. It's all about having time in the market. And I do know that Tesla, you know, or not know, but I'm very certain and positive that long-term Tesla is gonna be doing very well going into 2030. It's just right now, Elon Musk himself has mentioned that the economic climate, the headwinds are not too good. So things in the short term are uncertain. So yeah, my short-term trading account, uh, I might step back. But my long-term account, well, I'm just setting capital aside so I could go ahead and deploy more capital to buy more if we get lower. And I also want to highlight that there is a massive coupon code for the Push and Profit Private Group. It's going to be the first link in the description below. I'll also pin it in the comment section. It's for Memorial Day, so definitely take advantage of that. This way you have access to the Push and Profit Private Group and access to the Lesson Library where I talk about what I look at when it comes to trading and investing long term in the market. So definitely take advantage of that. Shout out to the new members that recently joined. But you guys let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on Tesla in the long term? or your thoughts on Tesla in the short term, or even your thoughts on this whole overall debt ceiling that is a massive cloud over the markets. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. And with that being said, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and watch this next video right over here where I go ahead and explain volume profile a little bit deeper.